Anyway, so, yeah, believe it or not, this is week five. <coughs> Coming to you live from the shores of uh, Bear Lake and Garden City. Uh, uh, I'm going to answer a few questions on anything that we've covered thus far. Uh, that would be plotting and um, user-defined functions. Um, and uh, hopefully we can keep those to a minimum because it'll take probably half hour, 45 minutes to go through this exam. Um, so any questions? Uh, where did my question, where, where did my question, there it is. Oh, no, that didn't have questions. Oh, I, clo I closed that. Did I close that? I don't know. Oh, it's it. Oh, there it is. There we are. Uh, if I want to turn multiple files, or do you want? To, uh, okay, um, for the the assignment due tonight, um, I can take it either way. If you want to sit there and manually attach each individual file, uh, I'm fine with that. Um, I can go in and download them fairly quickly. If you want to do a zip file, that's fine too. Uh, if you're working in uh, on a PC. Um, the easiest way that I have found to zip is when everything works. There we go. Um, so let's just go into my my uh, data files. Let's say I wanted to send all of these in a zip file. I would just highlight them all, right mouse click, send to, compress file. And there's your zip file. And then you can just submit that. So however you want, and that, that leaves a copy here too. That just, that throws a copy into the zip file. Um, so. Question about 614. I don't have my textbook. <coughs> I am sorry. I, I, I grabbed everything I thought I would need here tonight. And, um. I guess I can go grab the solutions that I think that has the question written on. Hang on, just give me half a, half a 14 seconds. Okay, time's up. Where is it? I'm, I'm hurrying. Let's see. Assignments. And, and also we have to deal with the fact that um, I, I am streaming this over my phone's hotspot, uh, Verizon works fairly well up here in Garden City. Um, hopefully we can get through this whole thing without um, losing our, our signal and our, our um, okay, uh, let's see, is it in the uh, PDF? I think the PDF has the questions written in them. Yes. Okay, 614. Why does it keep doing that? I don't want you to do that. Ah. Okay, 614 is an in file called height. Oh, okay, so this is the height program problem. Um, so basically what it's wanting you to do is um, you've created a function um, called height in part uh, in da, 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 da. <coughs> in one of your previous uh, problems um, and and to, to, to do the handle uh, you know I, I, it is is very simple I don't know if this is in the textbook um, but this this is all you need to do to create that handle is to give it the, the name that you want and then set it up basically like a um, an anonymous function. And then it's then you can just use it like any other. You know, do your F plots with it. I don't have my textbook, or I'd t take you to a, 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 a dedicated page to uh, to read that up on. Um,
there you go. Sorry, I wasn't more clear than that. I, it, yeah. Like I said, I don't, I, I don't have my textbook, so I don't oh my, my, my mouse pad's falling apart. Uh, okay. Um, any more questions? Uh, we've got a few more people come on, I think. i got to come down here to refresh. Nope. Yep. Cool. Um, okay. Well, if we got a number quite, hopefully you all downloaded the uh, the exam off of Canvas uh, out of the um, the announcement that I sent. Um, so this is the exam that we gave uh, spring of 2019, so a little over a year ago. Um, I went to 2000, the spring 2019 because there were a couple of problems in uh, spring of 2020 and fall and summer of 2019 that I didn't feel were appropriate for the first exam, and I didn't want to throw something like that at you during a review. I did that last semester and really confused my students. So, um, so again, uh, this format that I'm working on tonight is the live editor. I will, uh, when I, I create the exam, I'll create it in both M file and live editor. Uh, you can use whichever one you like. I prefer the exams to be in live editor. Uh, if you do it in an M file, I'll just convert to a uh, live editor when I start grading. <clears throat> uh, the reason I like that is because I can save the output that I see when I'm grading so you can see what I seen when I was doing the grading. And uh, to me, it's just more meaningful than a comment saying, you know, you should have done this. Um, if I'm wrong, I apologize, but um, I thought I was wrong once, but I was mistaken. So anyway, so we're going to start this problem. Don't forget to put your name up the top. Uh, shouldn't make much difference now because I just download them one at a time and grade them. But uh, just in case for some reason I get your files mixed up, it's good to go in and find out whose file is whose. Uh, so <clears throat> if you're working in the live editor and you're in a commented area that's all white like this and you want to start doing code, just hit that code button. If you're in a code area and you want it to be the uh, section break, just hit that button there. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much the difference between live editor. Well, there's a lot of differences, but that's that was the hardest thing for me to finally learn how to do. Uh, I got no instructions. They just said, here's live editor. Go figure out how to do it. So that's what I did. Okay, so on to the exam. Problem one, so we're 10 points. Part A, use MATLAB to create a vector named lowercase x having um, <clears throat> 50 logarithmically spaced values. And don't ask me to say that three times fast because I couldn't even say it once. Uh, starting from 0 0.01 and ending at 1,000. Now with the log space command, we put in the log of the values and how many we want. So there is our problem, part A. Part B. <clears throat> um about two times fast. Am I going too fast? Oh yeah. Well, if I, if I'm if I am going too fast, please uh, holler and let me know, and I'll try to slow down a little bit. Um. So part B is create the metrics that's. Uh, uh, oh, say two times fast. You said not three. Oh, okay, I got you now. Sorry. I only have two functioning brain cells, and when I'm at Bear Lake, neither one of them works. So, um, where am I? What is it? Okay, so we're going to create a, a, a matrix that is capital X this time, and this, this is two, two different uh, variables. And we're going to have it three, seven, uh, minus four. 12 and minus 5, 9, 10, 2, 6, 13, 8, 11, 
15, 5, 4, and 1. Okay, so right there, that was four easy parts. There are four, four easy points. Okay, so now part C. Create vector M. And this is pretty reminiscent of the first problem in, I think, chapter 4. Uh, consisting of the fourth element of column X. Oh, of the elements in the fourth column. Okay. So this is going to equal X all the rows in the fourth column. Create a vector n, which consists of exponents in the third row. So it's going to equal, um, not nine, the third row, all the columns. And it wants to know what the highest element in matrix X. Okay, so it doesn't want to know where it's at. It just wants to know what the highest one is. So we're going to go uh, spell it right, stupid. I am to highest value. Determine the highest element in matrix X. Okay. And we'll just do a double max here of X. <clears throat> and here is our answers. So here's our values. Um, our x value, our row, column, row, and the highest value was 15. And we can look in here and see that that, that is correct. <clears throat> Okay, on to problem number two. Oh, we need, oh, I gotta send you another data file. Dang, you need this data file here too. So I'll send that after this is over. I should have looked closer. Okay, so an engineer measures the diameters and lengths of the, uh, the number of steel rods. The measured data is given in the file named rods underscore data dot dat. The first column indicates the number of rods. The second and third column indicates the diameters and lengths of respectively. Use load function. See right here it says use load function to import the data. So <clears throat> that would be load um, rods data dots dat. Okay. Oops, we got to make that into code. It'll work better if it's not a, a comment. <clears throat> and I'll have it set up so you don't have to put all these extra codes breaks in there. Um, okay. Calculate the cross-sectional area and volume of each rod and report the answer using the correct number of significant digits. Yeah, uh, we never covered any of that. We don't cover that until we get into Chapter 7. So I did not um, require that of my students for this problem. Okay, so first we need, uh, the first is the number of rods, the second is, third is the diameters and lengths. So the diameters is going to equal uh, rods, data, all the rows of column two. I'm going to suppress that. And the lengths is going to equal rods, oh, I got to. No, that should be. No, I gotta have a comma up there, you dummy. Of all the rows from column three. <clears throat> we'll suppress that. Okay, so um, the cross sectional area is equal to I times R, which is going to be. Um, <clears throat> uh, the diameters divided by 2 squared. So there's the cross-sectional area. 
<clears throat> and the volume should be equal to um, the uh, cross-sectional area times length. Oh, length. There we go. Lowercase l. And we got to do the dot on that one because there are two matrices. They should be the same size. Um, we don't need a dot here because pi is scalar. Um, so let's calculate and see if we're right. Hey, it calculated. Yay! We like when it calculates. <clears throat> um, okay. So part three, put it in a table with the rods in the first column, columns cross-section over the second column, um, in the third column. Okay, so I guess we could um, come up here and pull this one out too. Or we could have done it all in down below, but um, there's many ways to do these. As long as you do what is asked in here, I don't care what you do in here. Um, so my table, okay, because we haven't gotten into chapter seven yet with column headers and title blocks and uh, formatting and making it look, the only thing you need to do in, in, in this exam, if it asks you to make a table, is to put it all together into a matrix. So we're gonna have, what did I call that first one? Rod, capital. And that should be, and then it wanted the uh, cross-sectional area and the volume. And there we have it. Now see, when we get into chapter seven, you can format this so it only has one decimal point here, or no decimals because you don't need them on the numbers. And then you could get in and do the sig figs. But without that, we don't cover that in this class. <coughs> okay, so that's problem number two. Um, problem number three. Plot the following sine functions on the same graph for x values from 1 to 5, selecting spacing to create a smooth plot. That I do look for. When it asks for a smooth plot, um, okay, someone's making noise, so I'm going to mute you guys. Everyone else is now muted. If you have questions, type it to me in the chat window. Um, so, it, the, the, the spacing, it, it, you should have noticed that on uh, the um, plotting one on the first, I think it was like second or third problem where you were doing the sine and cosine on one plot. If you only used a few points, you got triangular shapes instead of nice smooth sine curves and whatnot. At least I noticed that when I was grading. So anyway, so we're going to create, um, uh, let's uh, call it theta so that I can misspell it so many times. And we're going to start from just, oh, from from one, and we're gonna because we're not displaying anything in tables. I'm gonna use a 0 0.01 spacing so I can get really smooth lines. <clears throat> and then y1 equals sine of theta. <clears throat> and y2 equals sine of 2 times theta. <clears throat> okay, and I don't think there's any other formatting. No, just titles and labels. Handle function for second y by... Okay. <clears throat> so this one he wants you uh, they wanted you to use um, there was a couple of ways to do this um, I, oh sorry I've been sitting on a wooden stool for since seven o'clock this morning and my bones are hurting um, so there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, 
we'll do the way that I can remember right now because the new way change just came in the last revision or so. Um, so anyway, so um, we're going to plot the first one. And we're going to go X and we're going to do Y1. Um, um, and then uh, we can go ahead and uh, title uh, is uh, I, uh, you know I don't care what kind of title you put in and then we'll do the um, X label will be the same um, Tata and um, uh, um, what, 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 okay, yeah, Y label for this one, but not, 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 there we go. Uh, this one was sine of X, so sine. And there is a way to have that pop out, and I, I forget what the code is, but you could have it actually print out the um, Greek symbol theta so that it shows up in your plot nice and pretty. Okay, so now to get the second plot, there's two ways you can do this. One is um, plot YY, and this will put the plot on the other side. And that would be X comma Y2. And just this is so we can see what that looks like. Oh, don't give me that. Must be the same length. Oh, not X, stupid. See, that's why that right there. See, yeah, see, you should use the clear button because um, I, I, I defined theta and then tried to plot X. And X was defined somewhere before. Theta and theta down here too. Oops, no capital. Now it'll do it better. See, I did that just to see if you guys were uh, uh, paying attention. Oh, man, I tell you. Some days it doesn't even pay to get out of bed. They're using plot YY. See, um, we're going to, uh, the, the best way to do this one is with the new coding, which is Y axis and then to the right. And then we can plot theta versus Y2. And um, why label? Um, is a sign of two theta. And there, see, we got nice smooth lines. Um, so we're just not even going to mess with the plot YY. It's obsolete code now. Um, okay. Um, is this being recorded? Yes, this is being recorded. Uh, and 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 best part is I can go edit out all of my little boo boos so that you guys can say yeah he made a mistake but we can't prove it because he edited it out. Oh, I turned that monitor so I could see the the chat window better and I turned it off. There we go. Okay. All right, so hyperbolic fine sine function is defined by the equation. And this, this problem really drove me nuts when we did it. Okay, I, I, I worked the problem, and I contacted the guy who wrote the exam. I said, you really? Is that really? Is that really? what?" Is that? He said, yep, that's what I was looking for. And I'm like, okay. 
So using the above defi uh, definition for hyperbolic sine, write MATLAB code, okay, code. That just means right here. That doesn't mean a function. Um, the biggest difference between the live editor and an M file is in the live editor, the results come inside of the file itself instead of into the command window. Whoa. That's not what I wanted to do there. Uh, let's see, go back here, live editor, and rerun that so we get it in the right spot. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so um, if, it, if it says code or um, and, and unless it says function, um, the, the, the function would be the only time you would need to go create a user defined function. Um, so this just wants MATLAB code to calculate the hyperbolic sine of X and test your code for the sine of five. <clears throat> so, um, uh, uh, so we just simple, we just X equals five, cause that's what we're testing for. And then uh, do a sine H at, uh, you know, we can call it whatever we want. And then we'll just write out that equation. Um, is it good? Hello. We're going to divide everything up here. So we've got the EXP of X minus the EXP of, of minus X. And that's all divided by two, right? Yeah. And so there's that five points for that. I couldn't believe that that's all he wanted. I mean, that's, that's, that's a gimme five points right there. So now we want to plot the function sine X or the hyperbolic sine for range of five to, uh, or from negative five to five. So we'll set up a, um, <clears throat> a new X, X equals minus five. Again, I like um, nice smooth plots to five. If I'm not displaying the data, I'll put as many points as I can get into it. Uh, and then Y is equal to the hyperbolic sign of X. And then we'll just plot X and Y. And we'll do a title of <clears throat> what this is sine X plot. Y label is um, is uh, what is the sign of a hyperbolic sine of X and the X label <clears throat> is um, just X and we run that and we get a funky looking graph. Oh, we need to, uh, this is carrying over part of the, uh, this plot up here because we didn't clear the figure. So, if we do a clear figure CLF, it'll clear that, and there's our hyperbolic sign. Um, if it doesn't specifically state to use plot, then yeah, you could use um, F plot if you wanted to. It just says plot them. It doesn't say using the plot command plot this. It just says plot the function. So I'd, I'd go either way. Um, okay, so this one is, again, one of those, what value does this thing have? Uh, what is the smallest value the function can have for, uh, skip that D, for this range? What X value does this occur? Well, you can just look at it and know that the value occurs at minus 5. But it says to use MATLAB to do this. So we will 
assign um, the smallest value and its location is going to be the minimum of, I think it was X, wasn't it? Not X, so X. Yeah, no, Y. No, 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 Y. Y, not capital Y, Y. There we go. And, um, uh, whoa, dude. And then this will be X of location. This, so we found out where it is, um, Where the what the minimum value was in Y and where it was located, then we're going to go look in X and find out which value is in the same place as X. And so our minimum value was minus 74.203, and it's at minus 5, just like we thought from looking at the plot. Okay. I guess... If 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 uh, if you'd done this in F plot, you'd have had to find some other means to get part C, because um, if you didn't create this matrix uh, vector with the X, you wouldn't be able to pull out its location using MATLAB commands. So, okay, problem five, part A, create a vector X from minus four to four with 500 values, uh, 500, yeah, okay, so x equals linear spaced, and we're going from minus four to four with 500 values, and I'm gonna suppress that. Uh oh, somebody left, I bored them to tears. And then we wanna do y, from minus four, oops, I want to do a lin space, S-P-A-C-E, uh, from minus four to four with 750 spaces. Okay, the reason we did that was because we want you to use mesh grid to make them the same size. So we will come in here and um, we'll do capital Let's do X first. Capital X, comma, capital Y, close is equal to mesh grid of X and Y. <clears throat> okay, so there's the first part. Calculate R and Z with the following equations. Okay, code um, R is equal to the S squared of um, x but we want capital x because that's what we created with our mesh grid raised to the two plus capital y raised to the two drop it like flies and z is a sign of two times r and that's going to be a dot divided by r plus 0 0.001. Okay, and we have to use the dot divide on there because we're dividing by a matrix. You can't do that. Okay. Plot X, Y, and Z on one, com uh, okay, um, on a combination mesh. So, um, uh, so we're going to do a uh, mesh C. That's our combination mesh, contour plot, under mesh, surface plot. See, it tells it. And that's that's another thing with. I, don't, I I think it might work in the M file too, but I know. It, whoa, 
Everybody, I'm going to be here all by myself. Um, and then we're going to go with our capital X, capital Y, and our lowercase z. And then um, don't forget titles and plots. So uh, what's the, um, this would be a combination mesh plot. Um, this is kind of um, silly, but because we have nothing for here other than saying X. Y label is going to be Y and Z label is going to be, um, I guess we could do the equation that we created up there, sine of 2R divided by R plus 0, 0, 0.001. And you got to have some single quotations, double quotations, some kind of quotations around that. Okay. Oh, I got itchy. And there's our combination. And then it also wants a contour plot. So we're going to borrow some of this because we don't want to have to retype all that. And copying, pasting on the exam, save you time. Of course, you guys, well, you still have two hours. Um, on tour, and we're going to do our capital X, capital Y, and our lowercase z. And change the name here to contour plot. <clears throat> Okay, so that one is very reminiscent of one of the homework problems that was in that long chapter of plotting. Anonymous, 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 oh man, I tell you, between a log, logarithmically and anonymous, I can't speak tonight. So we need to create an anonymous function. And, and that's the only problem about this exam that you know, I, I, I had pause about doing tonight. It's it didn't have an actual user defined function. So if you need me to demonstrate that after I get done here, I will go and do that. Um, but anonymous functions um, uh, called cubic function equal to that. Okay, so um, cubic function. Okay, to make it an anonymous one, we start with an at sign and put in our variables with a space and then write our equation. Three times x raised to the three minus 12 times x raised to the two. Um, minus 33 times x minus 80. Okay, and if we want to make this for use with other vectors and matrices, we'll just put a little dot in there. <clears throat> okay, use the f plot function to plot the function from minus 10 to 10. We'll T, okay, another typo. So we'll do an F plot of our cubic function. Oops, we're going to go from minus 10 to 10. And cross our fingers that it doesn't explode on us. Oh, we got a problem right there.
Hey, it worked. Cool. I like it. The plan comes through. And then the next part is use the F minimum bound to um, determine a uh, function to find minimum function value in this range. Um, so we'll go min function. I mean, you can call it anything you want. Uh, so F min B and D and we'll give it our function and the range and uh, there we go 3.667 I think that's where it the minimum spot that it crosses the x-axis y-axis x-axis x-axis X is the one goes horizontally, Y is the one goes vertically. I know that, I know, but you're tired. Okay, what do we got? Two more problems here. Um, oh boy, okay, so this is the big one. This is the, 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 the sensor data. Okay, included in the exam is a file called defox, defects.dat. This file contains six columns. The first is a time vector. And seconds and columns two through six are readings from sensors and counts. Load the this file using the load command. There are six times 200 and, or 453 data points. So we will load. Again, it's just the file name with the extension. And, and it's got to be in an active cell. And so there it is. The data has now been loaded. Well, once I execute it, oh, let's do the. Uh, I usually, when I write my exams, start each problem for you with a clear and a clear. Um, so you don't have to worry about doing that. Um, so if we look over here now in our workspace and run this code, oh, was it defects? Yeah, there it was defects. So 453 rows with six columns. Um, okay, so using subplot create uh, plots for the first four sensors. Uh, plot the time on the x axis data in the sensor on the y axis. Okay, so we'll do that down here. Um, so we'll go sensor one is going to be a uh, defects um we want all the rows from column two because the first one is time well yeah we probably ought to get the time out of there too um time equals defects um all the rows from column one and we're going to suppress all of these, otherwise we're going to have a lot of data showing up. Sensor 2 equals defects. Let's call them 3. Sensor uh, underscore 3 equals Four. <gasps> you forgot to suppress that. <clears throat> Five equal to defects on columns from five, I think. Yep. Okay, so there's oh <clears throat> that's sensor four. Not that it makes any difference. <clears throat> so there's all our data. So now we got to use the subplots. So subplot, uh, we'll do two by two. The first plot is going to be a uh, plot of time and um, sensor one. 
and we'll title this one sensor one. That's profound. And then um, this is one thing I like to do. I mean, you can label these however you want, but whenever I'm doing a grid of the figure window with multiple plots that are the same X and Y stuff, I'll, I'll do the extremities. So this is going to be in the upper left-hand corner, so we'll have a Y label that will be um, counts. And then we'll go to sub plot two, two, two. So two, 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 plot number two is going to be the uppermost in the um, right hand side plot. We're going to do time versus sensor two. So uh, it just needs a, a title. Or two, and then we'll do a subplot two, two, three. Number three is the lower left hand corner, so this one needs both an X and a Y label. Um, time, comma, sensor three. Okay. <laughs> And then um, Y label is going to be, again, counts X label is going to be um, time. And I, I believe this was in seconds. And then, hello, sub, sub. Plot, and then our last one, two, two, four, is going to be the lower right-hand corner. We'll plot time against sensor four, not a period, a comma. I hope I got everything right up here. I think so. I guess we'll find out when I plot it. Huh? Uh, this will be title. Sensor four. Uh, I didn't do that. Where did the square brackets come from? I didn't ask for square brackets. There we go. And then this one is just going to have the X label. Again, I won't. I won't judge um, how you label them as long as you put some kind of labels on them. Uh, this is just how I like to do it, right or wrong, probably wrong, but, oh, we had an error. Uh, oh, I misspelled label again. Fix it. And so, see, the way I label it is that my Y labels, because it gets crowded if you have labels in here, too. But so my lot, those are all my Y labels going across, and these are my X labels. Again, however you want to do it is fine, uh, as long as you do some kind of labeling. So, um, side note, outside of MATLAB, outside of this class, this problem was one that I created many, many, many years ago. This is actual data that I took uh, doing some research. Um, running a Hall effect sensor across a hole in a steel pipe or plate. And these little, this bump and this bump are the signals that I'm looking for. The rest of these is noise in the background. These ones are noisy, but they were far away from the defect. This is the one I was after. So anyway, side note, that's what it was. Cool. Okay, back to where we're doing. Uh, it makes each line a different color. You must specify each color, don't you? Okay. So we got to come up here and do colors. I didn't catch that the first time. So um, let's do one. Um, I, this is I forget all the uh, the color options. So this is available to you during the test if you want to use it. Um, you can use the help command over here, and 
So there's our blue. So we got a red one. Um, uh, let's do a magenta one. Uh, let's, ooh, let's do white on white. That'd be cool. Yes, yeah, so you can have your textbook on the on the exam. Uh, let's do a green one. Uh, and the final one. Um, oh, it's not rocket science. Just give it a freaking color. There we go. We'll make it black. There we go. Okay. So that was the plotting of the data. And then the last question here is use data from problem seven, find the maximum minimum sensor reading from each sensor and the time that they occurred. Okay, so um, this is again, we'll, we'll do uh, max value. And this one has, um, as what oh it, it wants it from each sensor so we're, we're looking for a vector return not just a single scalar i don't want the max it doesn't ask for the maximum of all the data it wants it from each sensor so um uh what did we call that see that that's so long oh it's all the sensors oh we're gonna do another one here um we're going to call up data and make that equal to um, no defects. And it's going to be all the rows from column two to the end. <clears throat> so, uh, so the max value will be displayed Oops, if, if you spell it right, there's no I in value. And then um, time, um, um, I don't know. It's pretty sad when the hardest decision you have is what do you call a variable? Um, and then we're going to find what's in the max location. <clears throat> and so here are the maximum values for each column, and this is the time for which they have. Uh, uh, and we can transpose that so that it comes out. So that's the maximum value, and that's the time that they occurred. <clears throat> and then we need to do the same thing for the man. Um, Yeah, I'm lazy. <clears throat> okay. Okay, that was the exam. Um, hopefully I didn't confuse anybody. Um, I know I went through that kind of kind of kind of quickly. Um, any, any questions? I will unmut everybody now that I'm done with that part. Everyone else is now unmuted. Okay, so as far as the exam goes, um, the way I'm going to do this is um, I'm going to narrow it down to just a couple of days, probably later in the week or earlier in the week. Um, and... Um, 
um, what I'll do is you'll you'll send me a, an email in in Canvas. Let me know when you are ready to take the exam, and I will send you a copy of the exam in in whichever format you prefer, either M file or a, a live editor, and you will have two hours from that time to take the exam. Uh, you can use your textbook and the help windows in uh, MATLAB. Obviously, uh, you know, I can't tell whether you went online. I can't tell if you looked at your old homework. I have to trust that you uh, held true to the conditions of the exam. Um, uh, somebody suggested that I have you guys uh, digitally sign a form stating that you held true to these. Uh, I'm still toying whether or not I will do that. Um, I, I, I want to show you guys that I trust you to do, um, um, you know, what's expected. Um, I will be most likely sitting at my computer during this two-hour time, so if you do have questions, by all means, send me a, a message in um, Canvas. Um, that's why I want to kind of narrow it down instead of having the entire week available because I don't want to spend, you know, from 7 o'clock in the morning until midnight every day at my desk in that computer. Uh, I'll, I'll be gone before Thursday afternoon. Um, so if I can narrow it down, maybe do Wednesday, Thursday. I don't know if you guys really want to be taking a test on Friday night. Um, uh, so for right now, I'm not sure because uh, I don't I don't have the test written yet. Um, I mean, if you guys would rather do it at the first part of the week, I can get it written up over the weekend and have it ready to go on Monday. But, you know, I still got to get your uh, assignment five graded from chapter six, but that one goes fairly quickly. So I very well could be ready to go on Monday. I, yeah, I could, I, um, I, I, it's just been, been, th this semester is completely different for me. Um, the semesters in the past, all my students were in my class because they didn't have time during the day to take the test this time. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of you in this class and I, it's neither, neither good nor bad that are here that probably would have preferred to take it in person. Um, so I'm trying to cater to everybody, but in the past, uh, most of my students just, you know, came in when they could. Um, so I don't, I don't know what your guys' circumstances are. If you're just sitting at home waiting to take a test or, you know, back in the old days, uh, Blackboard had, when we were using Blackboard before Canvas was great. Because I did, I had the students sign up for a time to take the test and Blackboard would release the test to them at that time and only at that time. And it was really, really cool. Uh, but I have yet to find a way to do that in Canvas. And, you know, one, one nice thing I have is that uh, if you text or email me in Canvas, I get notifications on my iPad. And, you know, if I'm upstairs, it only takes half a minute to walk downstairs and fire up and jump on to get you going on the exam. Was any of this tonight helpful?